Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akim that's doing his work in sincerity and truth. Um, I just want to hit a quick topic. Um, you know, um, I had gotten into a debate with this unlearned uh, so called Christian, and um, the title of this uh, video is going to be The Jews Are in Fact. Christians. So um I hope it's edifying. Um let me just get to the point. All right. This is um let me get the book Acts. Chapter eleven verse twenty six. And when he had found them, he brought them to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians in Antioch. Okay, so now this is where the word Christian was first used. Okay, according to history. All right. So, um. Getting into debate with this with this uh, 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 so-called Christian, though, you know, they failed to um, get into history. OK. And to go into um, where they were first called Christians. OK. Now, this place, Antioch, OK, is uh, basically a uh, modern day Turkey. OK. I'm just going to get into a quick, a quick uh, little history of Antioch. OK. Lock, yeah. All right. Let me get to the point here. All right. Antioch, Turkey. Antioch was founded by Seleucus Nicator in 300 BCE and became the capital of the Seleucid Empire. In antiquity, Antioch was an important Jewish center, and from its foundation, Full rights were bestowed upon the Jews, where the inhabitants rebelled against Darius II in 142 BCE. The, the soldiers of Jonathan the Hamasonian, Hasimonian were sent to quell the revolt and set the city in flames. There must have been a considerable number of Jews in Antioch by the 2nd century. Josephus praises the beauty of his great synagogue. Basically, that's the point I want to um, get into, all right? Uh, Josephus uh, praises the beauty of his great synagogue, and they were doubtless number of other places of worship, okay? So that's the point, though. But the point was that that the, who Paul went to, okay, all right, in Antioch were, in fact, Jews, okay? And the fact that they were first called Christians in that in that city, okay, because of the synagogues that were there. You see, you know. But when you get into the word Christian, all right, it just simply means uh, anointed or follower of who people are going to call Jesus Christ. Okay, this is um the Webster's dictionary. Christian, a person who believes in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Let me just put it like that. All right. One A. One who professes the belief in teachings of Jesus Christ. Okay. So basically, the Christians were Jews in Antioch. Okay. Now, we're going to get into the word Jew. Okay. Now, let's see this. So lucky. I got it up here. Got it up here on um let's see. Who was the first Jew depends on exactly what is meant by the word Jew. Originally, God's chosen people were known as Hebrews. Later, after they settled in the promised land and formed a nation, they were known as Israelites. The term Jew did not come into use until after the ten tribes were exiled to Assyria and Judah was exiled to Babylon. 
in the latest stages of the captivity, uh, which is uh, around the book of Esther, and the early stages of the return of the to the land of Israel, which is around the time of uh, Ezra and um, Nehemiah, the tribe of Judah was dominant. The word Jew developed as a shortening of the word Judah, okay? But the word Jew was used as a descriptor for more than just the tribe of Judah, okay? The dominance of the tribe of Judah in the return of the land resulted into all Israelites, people of all 12 tribes being referred to as Jews. So basically, everybody was just thrown as far as um, the other nations. They just threw us all in one pot and just called us Jews, okay? So now, when you get into it, the word Hebrew, the word Israelite, okay, the term Jew, and the term Christian is all one of the same, okay? Now, these people that are coming up against uh, uh, um, that, this is a fact, this is going into history, okay? So, they come up against that, they have no understanding because they're getting caught into that term Christian as being a religion or Christianity, you see? Okay? I want to get a... Uh, let me get another scripture here. Let me get um. Let me get Acts. Let's lock in. Let's see, chapter thirteen, verse thirteen. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Pathos, and they came to Perga and Parphylia. And John departed from them, which returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came into Antioch, into Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and sat down. Okay? So now, proving that there were synagogues in that town of Antioch. After the reading of the law and of the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent, sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren... If ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Okay? Now, this is Paul standing up, right? Verse 16. Then Paul stood up, beckoning with his hand, and said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear the Most High, give, a, give audience. Okay? But the point is, is that he was um, gesturing to the audience. Men of Israel, okay, and this was this was actually in the town of um the city of uh, Antioch, okay, where this took place, okay, right. Let me uh jump to uh Acts chapter fourteen verse nineteen, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch in Iconium, who persuaded the people. And Paul, having stoned and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing that he'd been dead. Okay, so this is when the point is, is that that certain Jews came came from Antioch, and they was trying to come up against Paul. Okay, in his ministry, but the point is, is that they were Jews in Antioch. Okay, which were called Christians. Okay, now let me get um, let me get uh, Acts chapter. 13, verse 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of Yahweh. Right. So if they continue in the grace of Yahweh, what does that make them? That makes them a Christian. Okay. All right. Who's supposed to be the Christian? The Jews and the religious proselytes that follow Paul and Barnabas. Okay? So, all of these terms that you're using, okay? So, now if you're calling yourself a Christian, okay? You're actually, in, in actuality, you're calling yourself uh, a Jew. Or you're considering yourself a Hebrew. Okay? You cannot tie yourself to being a Christian and then reject the, the fact of, of, of you being a Hebrew or a Jew. You know, you know, because that is not not it doesn't have anything to do with religion. You know what I'm saying? It all has to do with you, your stock, okay, your lineage, okay. That's just what this is all about, okay. And this is who Paul uh, 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 was speaking to. 
you know? And this is going on towards the, um, after um, these areas were, were Hellenized, you know? So when you get into the history of um, Hellenization, you would understand who um, basically, um, who he was talking to as far as like the Gentiles, which was Israelite foreigners, you know, but that's another subject. Um, I did a video a while back concerning who did Paul go to, okay? But um, the topic, we want to stay on topic with this, right? Now, we're going to get to uh, the beginning of this chapter in Acts 13, all right? This is um, Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now, they were in the church that, were, that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that were called Niger. Now, I want to stop right there. I want to get, get that word Niger, right? Jump into the uh, blue letter real quick. Get it time to load up. Okay. 13 and 1. Now, we're, we're dealing with the left side. Now, I had a... Um, a, par a parallel, okay, which is the NIV, but we're going to use, um, we're going to basically just jump into, um, get into this word here, okay? Okay, Niger, black, surname of the prophet Simeon, right? Right. Nigger. Okay. Black. Okay. So now it's giving you a description of the men of the Lord that were in Antioch. Okay. All right. Now to further get into that. Okay. Of the people. Okay. To further get into that. We're going to get a. Uh, let's get a. Uh, Second Corinthians. Eleven, verse twenty-two. All right, let me jump up. All right, now this is Paul speaking. Right, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we've been weak. How be it? Wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? Okay. Right. Was Christ Christian? Followers of, 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 of Yahweh Shai? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, and deaths off. Right? Okay, so that's basically the point I wanted to get. Okay? All right? Paul was stating who he was. Okay? In the scripture. Okay? All right? Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Okay? So basically, these are all of one and the same. Okay? All right? Now, for people that want to get simple, right? All right? No, well, well, Paul was a, uh, he was a Roman. All right, let's, let's, let's see. Okay? Let's see. This is um, Acts. All right? Because they'll try to pull this scripture, right? And there's another one um, um, that um, when he, he, uh, uh, Paul says uh, something to the, to the effect of um, um, him being a Roman. But um, this is um, Acts 20, chapter 22, verse 28. And the chief captain answered, with a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, but I was free born. Now the chief captain was saying that he paid a great deal of money to obtain his freedom as being a citizen. He had to pay for his citizenship as being a Roman. Okay? All right. Now when you get into the history though, okay, um, the, it, it, the, the areas that they were in, that our people were scattered, fleeing from persecution, okay, 
But but uh, aside from that, though, we were Hellenized. Now, this is going into the Roman Empire now. So now this chief captain answered um, and said that he had to pay for his freedom. You know what I'm saying? But Paul said that he was freeborn. OK, now you want to get into. Um, let's get into. Um, Salakia. Yeah. Let's get into. Paul, OK, let's uh, pull it up here. See, okay. I really want to get it up on the on the screen here. All right, so I can show up on screen. Okay, now I want to get to the point. Okay, all right. Now these simple questions, like I said, is these these are, are all this information is at your fingertips. All right, to get into what it is that you are claiming to be or what you're into, okay? Now, I want to get to the point right here, all right? If you can see it at the top of the screen. Paul took advantage of his status as both a Jew and a Roman citizen to minister to both the, the Jew and Roman audiences, which is, you know, you got to, you know, eat the meat and, and spit out the bones, you know what I'm saying? Chew the meat and spit out the bones. But basically, he used the Roman citizenship as an advantage to be able to go into these lands and, 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 and preach the word. So him being a Roman citizen, uh, basically, uh, he was almost like an untouchable. Like, like they couldn't really, uh, as far as the authorities, okay? All right? Because when he was locked up, they had to let him go because he was a Roman citizen. You see? All right? Um... I don't want to take too long with this though, but I want to get uh, let's get uh Philippians, all right. Chapter three, verse five, all right. This is Paul speaking, okay, to um the church at Philippi, right. Now this is um this is him going into um 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 basically his lineage, okay? Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin in Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee, okay? So this is what he uh, uh was brought up as, you know? Uh under the teachings of Gamaliel, you know what I'm saying? He was a Pharisee, you know what I'm saying? All right? But the Lord had used him as a vessel to do the, his will. Okay? So um, there's an account with, uh, um, 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 with uh, uh, King Agrippa, right? Where... <laughs> All right, let me just get it real quick. This is a quick, quick little... I'm going to just probably end it off right there. But... Uh, let me get that account real quick, though. You know? This is Acts... Uh, 26 and 28. Now, then Agrippa, King Agrippa, said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Meaning, like, okay, King Agrippa, okay, he was not, he could not really be of a Christian, but the what would happen was, was as Paul being a, a, a persecutor of the Christian church, and so when the uh, 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 the spirit of the Lord came up came upon him, so he's explaining this to King Agrippa, to where he was on his way to Damascus, and he fell off the horse, and he was blinded, and he was persuaded, and he was chosen to be that that special vessel for the Lord to um to do His will. So from him going to persecuting the church, to being a, a follower of, of of Christ, okay, which so to speak, right, of of, of Yahweh, okay, to do His will. To being the person, people, um, to where people came up against him and persecuted him, but he he had was compelled to do the work. You see, he was he was compelled to be a follower of of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You see, okay. So now he's explaining this into King Agrippa, and then uh, the story was uh uh so compelling uh, unto him, right? You see, what he said, let me just jump up one verse. King Agrippa, believe you thou the prophets? I know thou believest, you know? So he did believe, but the whole thing is that King Agrippa was not of that stock, though. You see? 
But it was just the fact is that that story was so compelling unto him, okay, that he said, hey, yeah, thou almost persuadest me to be a Christian. Yeah, I'm just a little uh, uh, piece off right there, though, you know. But um, the main point is, is that the word Jew, the word Hebrew, okay, the word Christian, the word Israelite, okay, there's all of one of the same. OK, when you get into the scriptures, though, and you got to get into this history and understand what it is. OK, now, when you think of uh, Judy, uh, Christianity and Judaism, those are all injections. OK, those are all injections into the, um, this this true gospel. OK. All right. Which is the good news. OK, those are all injections. You know, the scriptures say um, that the time will come. Uh, you know not what you worship, though, but the time and hour will come where the true worshipers will worship the um the Father in spirit and in truth. You know, you know. But um, that's basically uh uh, uh the whole thing right there. I hope I made my point. You know, and uh, let me just grab that real quick. Let me close. I'm gonna just close it out with that. This is um. This is John 4 and 22. All right. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Right. Verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is where the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seek of such to worship him. Okay, so that's basically the point. Okay, so now for for you 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 people that 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 are caught up in this religion, okay, this is actually your heritage and your lineage. Okay, and all of those words are all of the same. Okay, they're all one of the same. So now, in fact, though, if if, if you're calling yourself a Christian, you're basically considering yourself a a a. a uh, a Jew, a Hebrew, an Israelite, okay? Because they're all basically one of the same, okay? And this Christian just means follower of Christ, okay? It's not no dang religion, okay? All right? So with that, I hope this lesson was edifying. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the Akim that's doing his work in sincerity and truth. Shalom.